the world of football with a soccer perspective. This is Soccer Today with Dwayne Rollins and Kevin Laramie, live on the Sports Podcasting Network. Good day, good night, and welcome to Soccer Today for Friday, October 25th, 2019. Big weekend in the world of soccer, big two nights in the world of North American soccer as well with the MLS Cup playoffs. And we'll start with the MLS Cup playoff, but first of all, how you doing, Dwayne? I'm doing well. I'm on my way to Hamilton for uh, the media day of the Canadian Premier League final. Uh, looking forward to the free lunch I'm going to get. No, not just that, <laughs> but, uh, but also to have the access to all the players and the coaches and the commissioner and to get to see the trophy. Uh, they're unveiling the, unveiling the trophy at uh, 4 p.m. tonight, so that'll be fun. Uh, the trophy is one of the things I'm looking most forward to today, so make sure you send me that picture as soon as you have it because I want to see the hardware, the silverware up for grabs tomorrow and next Saturday in the Canadian Premier League final. Also this weekend on Sunday, the NWSL final. I'll talk about those two games later tonight. Let's start with Major League Soccer. Two exciting games. Well, two games last night. One very exciting one that was similar to a lot of Atlanta games we've seen before. Let's start, Dwayne, with Atlanta and Philadelphia. A 2 nothing win for Atlanta that was never truly in doubt last night. No, it, it, Atlanta United is peaking again at the right time. And, and we did talk a lot about in the lead up to this game, the injuries that they had, particularly in the back and whether that would provide Philadelphia with an opportunity to to maybe pull an upset there. And let's be clear, it would have been an upset even despite Philadelphia's great season that they had. Um, and it is something to build on through the union. And I'm sure we'll have time to talk about their season in, in a general way, maybe with Jonathan in, in the days ahead. But but the story is Atlanta and Martinez and his second goal in particular and, and the ability of that club who are, of course, the defending champions and the U current U.S. Open Cup champions uh, to get another job done, get another win done. And, and Toronto's next up on the docket for them. It, it'll be an interesting matchup there. Um, it was I, I texted you and said Philly didn't offer much. And, and I think part of that was their injuries, in particular their injury to Bedoya, who wasn't really himself for most of the, the last month or so of the season. And that's Philadelphia in a nutshell to me. They have a player like that who is so key to everything they do that when he goes down, they aren't able to sort of cover it up with other talent players. And you're seeing the better teams. You know, Atlanta figures out how to – how to cover for two missing defenders that are important for them. Toronto figures out how to cover without Josie in the lineup. They're, these are teams that have, have won and know how to win and have these these parts that have stepped up and have stepped up before. Philly has never had that opportunity yet, so they're going to have to build on that. But, um, you know, it's a coin toss. Atlanta, and if they, Atlanta gets back to the MLS Cup final, I'm not betting against them. No. <laughs> well, it depends against who. Can you imagine an LAFC Atlanta final? That would be a cracker of a game. Speaking of, you mentioned team covering for injured players. I was going to say LAFC cover for Mark Anthony Kane, but they did yeah. concede three goals, <laughs> and they did look at some points like defending was an option for them. But yeah, anyway, look, uh, you know, Alicia told us yesterday that Mark Anthony Kane was maybe day to day. Walker Zimmerman, she thought he might start, but uh, he do summer Zimmerman was on the bench. Uh, Mark Anthony Kane did not. I'll go so far watching that game last night. You know, I just watched the highlights again just before the show started just to remind myself a little bit because it was so crazy, so many goals. And there was a moment where the commentator said, you know, this this derby continues to defy expectations. It continues to be unworldly or something. There was a term he used like that. And I thought to myself, sure, if by defy expectations you mean not offer any level of defensive responsibility <laughs> whatsoever. Yeah, I mean, entertainment purposes he was talking about. The entertainment, yeah. uh, entertainment expectations were met. It was a terrible defensive game. And, I mean, I don't know what it is. I think LFC gets sucked in by the Galaxy. The Galaxy are just terribly defensively. That's that's oh. what they are. They're just an awful defensive team. And um, they have been for several years now. I mean, you can probably trace back their defensive fragility to letting uh, Omar Gonzalez go, uh, what, five or six years ago now. And, now, of course, back in the league. So it's it, it's really just a club that has, until they figure that ass, until they get balanced. I mean, the Galaxy are just an imbalance club but they have such high-end top talent that they can play these games and play exciting games but look at their end of the season what four threes two four threes back to back they <laughs> last night like it's nuts what they <laughs> do and, was and, nuts. and it was we we're just going to finish on philly and atlanta quickly so we can move on to lafc yeah, and LA yeah. galaxy because i think we have more to say on the ladder philly 
tried. They did our best. Good season. And, you know, when we look at NYCFC losing in this fashion Wednesday, it, it seems like their season is a disappointment. It does tarnish the season. Philly losing last night to Atlanta, I do not think it tarnishes the season of Philly. Philly had a very successful season and unexpectedly a, a successful season and maintained a level of play that was hard for us to imagine they would. And they did, and they built a lot of great momentum heading into 2020. If they just put a few pieces here and there and maybe get a Bedoya healthy next year, hopefully, and you have yourself a good team in the Eastern Conference. Yeah, if you subscribe to the theory of you have to lose before you can win, uh, Philadelphia certainly has, you know, checked that box off now. And and they just need another difference maker on the team. And, and the success of it, when you're a place like Philadelphia, which isn't a terrible market by any means, but it's still not a market that anyone thinks of outside of North America, right? So if you're going to attract someone to, to play um, at that level, to play – you know, a, a DP big decision maker, you want to give them things that are beyond like beaches or, you know, New York city basically. And you don't want to say we're close to New York city. That's not really a selling point, but what you want to do is, is <laughs> come to us. You can go to New York in an hour. Yeah, no, precisely. <laughs> so, so what you, uh, you have to do is you have to provide them with an opportunity to win. And now they have a proof of concept there, right? They have shown that they can be successful uh, they can be a team that, uh, sorry, I'm at a train station if you hear the background noise here, but uh, that they can be successful if they, uh, and if you have that piece, then maybe that's what's going to convince people. So this is a building block for sure that they can go off. But to talk about uh, the other side of it, I, you know, it's Martinez, man. Look at that goal, that second goal. When you have a difference maker like that, man, that second you're, goal? you're in every game. I was, uh, full disclosure, I was uh, one of my last few shifts in my regular work. So I was working last night and keeping an eye on that game. And I saw Martinez running like, oh, man. Oh, oh, I have to watch this for a second. Then he that shot. And I was like, oh, yeah, it's a goal. Wow. And I stood there for like five seconds. But I'm moving, just looking at the screen. Someone looks at me. Are you okay? I'm like, I'm fine. I'm just in awe. Yeah, no, it, it was a hell of a shot and, and the goal of the of the round for sure. Um, and it, it makes him dangerous. I mean, you know, if you're TFC, they're looking at that and going, okay, well, I, we know what we need to do. Can we do it? Mm, I don't know. <laughs> <It's> <laughs> we'll like, see. If you... If you try to contain him, him and Atlanta will beat you by possession and by using the other pieces. If you try to contain him too much, they'll beat you on the counter with Joseph on the counter. So it'll be an interesting well, tactical matchup that we'll uh, analyze next week. Yeah, we have, like you said, we'll get into that a lot more depth next week. But if you look at TFC's biggest weakness, <laughs> it's their inability to defend the counter. They, they are slow of foot, so it's it's going to be a big challenge for them. They, that's, they, how, <laughs> that's how Montreal won the Canadian Championship in 2019, is that said counter. Let's move to the main the, the main event, the, 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 the last match, the main event of the evening, LAFC versus the LA Galaxy. For the first time ever, LAFC won against the Galaxy when it mattered most. They got the job done. Carlos Vela with a play for Anthology. When he gets tackled, fouled, he's down on the ground, still keeps the ball, gets up, sees Diego Rossi, sends the ball to him. It's 4-3, and then it got 5-3 right quickly after that, but that was one heck of a play by Vela. And on top of it, he scored two. What a game last night. What a freaking game. Well, yeah, the two stars delivered. I mean, Iber with the hell of a pass on Galaxy's first goal scored the second goal, albeit on a, on a cluster of errors. But nonetheless, he did finish it. And that's part of those errors were probably caused by his presence. So we'll, we'll give him credit for it in a bit there. So, But to back to Vela, I mean, you know, if there was any doubt about the MVP, I mean, I know you don't vote for the playoffs. The voting's already done. But if there was any doubt that they got it right, and I'm sure they did, uh, it was it was ended last night. He is the best player in the league right now. Uh, by a bit, I would say even. And, and you know, Ibra, you know, his comments <laughs> earlier in the season might have motivated him to to show in a big game against him directly that he can perform. Uh, I don't think Ibra's comments were wrong, by the way. I, I think Ibra's oh. correct that he is by far the better player overall in his career. I mean, it's... It wasn't know, about unless... the comments. It was always about his delivery of the comment, how he said it, yeah. right? He said it well, in a very, very condescending way. Yeah, it's also was a highly nuanced thing that he was kind of saying in a very flippant way. Sure. Yes, Ibra was at his peak a 
top five player in the world. Villa is, you know, unless you're Alexi Lawless, God love him, I'm trying to argue that he's Villa is currently the top 20 players in the world, which is <laughs> absurd. But nonetheless, <laughs> we're not going to go. There's, no, never mind. Never mind. Never I mind. love he's, Alexi. He's, he's, I he's trying it. to pull us in. <laughs> and it <laughs> worked. It almost worked. And I almost got you. Exactly. Yeah. No, uh, he is definitely, though, one of the best players in the hemisphere and one of the best players, well, clearly the best player in Major League Soccer and, and the player that would be a star on most teams in the world outside of the top 10 or so. And that's that's a difference maker that they have that, that other teams do not. Now, that said, you know, the, I'm not even being biased about with my flag or my passport here. I, if they don't have Mark Anthony K in that lineup for, that, for against Seattle, oh, yeah. it's going to be trouble because they they – showed the inability to defend, which we haven't seen from them a lot last night. It wasn't just about them being, you know, mentally blocked by LA, or by no. Galaxy, I should say. It was, there was problems there. There was a lack of shape. There was a lack of, of sort of stuck in this that, that I haven't seen from that team in a while. And, and I think it's because of Kay, who is yeah. the key clog in the middle of their midfield that allows their creative players to get out and do the stuff that they do well. Galaxy are terrible defensively, absolutely insanely terrible defensively that's why they won the game seattle yeah. is not that no <laughs> so seattle's yeah. a lot more organized and that's one thing la is going to have to be careful with is how organized seattle will be but in a sense it, it might help la as well because you mentioned it they get suckered into a we'll use a boxing analogy here something we rarely do but here's my boxing analogy for you they, they get sunk into a street fight when they really need to be a boxer and just roll with the punches and counter when they can and get the big blow then which is a goal against seattle it might be easier to do this thing because you're playing against a team that's going to be organized and that's going to make sense to what they do when you have chaos mixed into the equation the result is always unpredictable which is what lafc versus the galaxy is against seattle we might have more of a tactical technical battle than a physical gritty intangible 5-3 victory for lafc which will be should be two great games usually sometimes deep uh, comes in the playoffs the two game series Dwayne didn't give us the best games but I think LAFC Seattle and Toronto Atlanta should be two very high caliber games in Major League Soccer. Yeah, I mean, look, you have the four teams that are left are all among the highest spending teams in this league. They all have star power if they're healthy. So it, it should be a good game here. I mean, you know, those that, there are a lot of people out there, and I, I mentioned this uh, uh, on our previous show. Uh, for this round, how there's a lot of people that like to suggest that MLS is a league where you can sort of punch above your weight and do all these, you know, money ball type things and, and the spending doesn't necessarily correlate to, to winning. Well, I think that's becoming increasingly BS. Look at these four teams left. And that's going to be a battle royale from them. And you can, you know, I think clearly Toronto, by virtue of their season and by virtue of the questions around Josie, is the fourth here, but they're not that far behind the other three. But the other three, I absolutely can make equal arguments that they should be favored for this. And L.A., had they been fully healthy, they would have been a step above. I do not think they are fully healthy, as we well, we know where they're not. And as we've mentioned, I think that that has pulled them down. And it's going to be very interesting how this how this plays out uh, over the next, well, quickly. We'll find out Tuesday and Wednesday next week. It's not a lot of time. We've got a weekend to breathe. You know, Not that we'll be breathing much. We've got uh, the NWSL final and the Canadian Premier League first leg to, to occupy our time in yeah. addition to our European stuff. But exactly. uh, it'll be um, a lot of fun. And then, then we have a bit of a break before the final. And that'll be, uh, that'll be good. That's weird too. The break that they go into, uh, you know, it's all 10 days for the, to the final. I guess that'll give them a chance to be healthy. So yeah. really, if you're, if you're LAFC, I, I just, for all these teams, well, LFC, all four Toronto, teams are banged up. When you look at it, Dwayne, like yeah, literally LAFC, Seattle, heel. yeah. Like, Svensson cannot be 100% after that tackle from Everton Louise late in that game on Wednesday. But to finish with the Galaxy and LAFC, let's talk about Zlatan, okay? We've talked about Vela, we've talked about the game, we've talked about the great things we have seen. Zlatan's last motion in Major League Soccer was a classy, and yes, I'm being sarcastic here, a classy crotch grab gestured toward 
an LAFC fan. And while he was walking out the pitch, he wasn't celebrating with anyone. Like most of the other players were shaking hands with the other team and congratulating and talking. Zlatan has no friends. Zlatan leaving the pitch and Zlatan grabbing his crotch towards the crowd. Classy until the end. <laughs> yeah. He's entertaining in his own way, but he, he's a heel, right? And that has its value. But like any heel act, it gets old after a while. And, and, and like any heel act, Dwayne, at the biggest moment, the biggest stage, the baby face goes over. There you go. And last yeah. night, Carlos Vela, the baby face, went over the heel of Zatan. Uh, it actually, if you were you know, scripting this from a wrestling perspective, it would have been perfect because the heel always got the advantage in the end and always had the last word, but in the, in the very end, at WrestleMania, alas, the good guy won, right? So there you go. <laughs> LAFC <laughs> Vela Mania runs wild on yeah, you. Yeah, exactly. Uh, look, I... Th- we don't know for sure whether this is Latan's last act. I suspect it is. Um, I don't suspect it's his last act in the game. Um, I, he's already made noises about going back to Europe, and, and I think that there are some clubs over there that are crazy enough to do it. Um, so there, there you go. I mean, there's desperate enough is the way to put it. Right? Hell, and he might even. I could even see United doing something insane with him. That that. <laughs> yeah, I, maybe I'm just hoping they do that because that would be a disaster of <laughs> epic proportions. But you just want to see it happen. You just want to see the world burn, or at least the red part of Manchester. I I, I have a hunch she's going to end up in Syria for for a short term contract similar to. To David Beckham at the end of his career when he ended up at Milan for a little bit. I, 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 Syria is a league that I think older players can be a little more effective in. Um, there are some clubs over there that are battling for kind of those middle Europa spots that, that maybe could use a, just a little little uh, boost of, of energy and, and interest. And, and, you know, there's always, uh, I think, uh, a history of the big acts, the big personalities doing well in that country. So, so maybe that's where he ends up. I would be very surprised if he's back in Major League Soccer next year. But the Galaxy, the Galaxy really need to find a way. They are lost now that LFC comes in here. They used to be the big bad. They were the baddie. They were the they were the Manchester United, basically of the league. You either loved them or you hated them, and they acted as such. But they were successful. They backed it up. But they they have no direction right now. They're just a collection of of stars without form or build or or logic to how they're being signed and, and they really need to say take a step back and reevaluate how they're building things and Slatan is a perfect example of that he's not a player he was a he's a big name star like we got to have him so they take them it's like a kid in a candy store like they're eating all the jelly beans and they're not they're ignoring their vegetables but eventually that <laughs> kid's gonna collapse because he has no food in him <laughs> right so Slatan is is it? I don't want to say jelly bean because I like jelly beans. Zatan is that black licorice that you you don't like. He's yeah, I, I I don't mind black licorice. I'm weird, but yes, I know exactly what you're saying. He's whatever color, the, the black. Color me not that surprised. <laughs> there you go. That's my mother loved the black licorice uh, in the day. So there's oh I got this great licorice in Iceland that was just spectacular. If anyone's listening in Iceland want to send me some licorice from there, I would very appreciate it. It's very bitter. It's good anyway. Oh yeah, maybe maybe it's real. It's real. Uh, Real licorice they use. Well, that's fascinating. And, you know, for next week, we're going to obviously go deep into the last remaining games in the playoff in the conference finals to set up MLS Cup on the 10th, of course. Also, this weekend starts the Canadian Premier League final. And before we say goodbye to Dwayne for the day, he has a train to catch very soon. So I'm going to send it to you, Dwayne. What are you looking really forward to in the first leg of the Canadian Premier League final? It's a home and away series, so nothing is going to be definitive on Saturday. But what do you see happening tomorrow at Tim Hortons Field? Um, I, Forge's identity really stems around their their top end uh, sort of midfield and forward kind of attacking play. Uh, they are a team that can be pretty dynamic when they're on. And, and, you know, it's Tristan Borges in particular, who is a player that has really excited this year and, and has scored some great goals. Uh, I think that if Forge is to win this thing, if they were to pull the upset, then they need to get out and get a couple goals. So I think it's going to be an open game tomorrow, more than most first legs are. And that's going to be pretty good to watch. A Calgary Cavalry, I, I think that they're probably going to 
to manage this a little bit. They, they've proven to be quite successful at managing first legs uh, throughout their run in the Canadian Premier League. Uh, they're just a solid team. It's funny because I really appreciate what Tommy's done in Calgary, and you know, I picked them to win the title in the start of the year, and a lot of people did because of the, the base, the core that he had. We just talked about the Galaxy a minute ago and how they're like star heavy and, and not that well built. Well, Calgary in different league, different context, but Calgary is kind of the opposite of that, right? They don't have a lot of high-end star power in there. There's not a lot of players I suspect in Calgary that are going to, you know, go on to much bigger leagues. Uh, but there's a lot of players in Calgary that are going to have long pro careers, and you know, solid guys, right? And, and so I think that it's kind of a clash there because I think Hamilton's the opposite. So it should be fun to watch the young players perform at a, at a big stage. Um, I, I'm also looking forward, Kevin, just the idea of watching a final and. Although I would, I would take it, make it a single game. I, I think it should just be one off because I think um, as Steven said in the interview that we had on the two solitudes this morning, uh, Steven Sandor, um, I'll give you a bit of a preview of that. He, he sort of talked about how North Americans have different concepts of, of how the world works and how a, a one off big occasion playoff type stuff is important. So if you want to listen to that full interview, two bucks or more on patreon.com. But, uh, but and, yeah. And I, more to come on that side in the next couple of days. Our Canadian Premier League final first leg coverage will be on the Two Solid Dude Soccer Podcast. So one show already recorded dropping after this show and another later on today with sound from the Media Day today. Exactly. So, yeah, I, I just, I'm looking forward to the occasion. So I, I'll be at Media Day. Watch my Twitter feed, 24th Minute. Uh, watch uh, Patreon over like the Sports Podcasting Network feeds uh, to know when we have the Patreon only stuff that goes out. Uh, but I'll mix it in, the the paywall stuff with enough free stuff out there that there'll be something for everyone. But it's two bucks a month. You, know, you can afford a coffee. You can throw us a toonie, right? Exactly. Well, yeah, throw us a toonie. But don't literally do it because that might actually be painful. Yeah, especially if you're in the stadium. I, I don't yeah. really want to get with any toonies. <laughs> like it comes from the second deck. Ow, my eye. I am <laughs> lost an eye. On that note, we'll say goodbye to Dwayne for today. Let him catch his train and go to Hamilton. It seems like it's close, but it's always further than you think. That's Hamilton for you. On that note, we'll take a quick break and come back after this break for a week in preview. You are listening to Soccer Today. Follow us on Twitter at Soccer Today SPN and like our Facebook page, facebook.com forward slash sports podcasting network. You can find the podcast version of all the shows we do on iTunes, Apple Podcast, Google Play Store, TuneIn Radio, iHeartRadio, and anywhere you get your podcast. And we're back on soccer today. I'm Kevin Laramie, and Dwayne has left. He's all aboard going to Hamilton, and I'm here to preview the weekend in the world of football. Of course, we'll get to Europe in a second. We'll get to the Premier League. We'll look at a little bit of France, Germany, and of course, as well, Spain and Italy, the games of this weekend. But for me, the two games that I'm going to make sure I do not miss is tomorrow, the Canadian Premier League final, the first leg on October 26th, and it will be available free For Canadian viewers on CBC, yes, the national television broadcaster, CBC will be broadcasting tomorrow's first leg of the Canadian Championship. Also, Sunday on TV as well on TSN in Canada, ESPN in the United States, the NWSL final is taking place between the North Carolina Courage, the defending champions, and the Chicago Red Stars. Two teams that are going to have a great game. They uh, had a different path to the final. In the semifinal, the North Carolina Courage did we did beat Seattle Rain and Megan Rapino 4-1. If you want to know the big stars of North Carolina Courage, there's a couple of names you'll for sure notice if you are a U.S. Women's National Team or a Canadian Women's National Team supporter. If you're not familiar with the NWSL, North Carolina Courage from Canada, Stephanie LeBay, goalkeeper for the Canadian Women's National Team. Crystal Dunn, a striker for the U.S. Women's National Team, is the striker for the North Carolina Courage. Those are two big names of the Courage heading into the final on Sunday at 3.30 p.m. Eastern Time. 1230 Pacific, the Chicago Red Stars, within its rank, one of the best players in the world right now. 
Sam Kerr. So Sam Kerr and the Chicago Red Stars will face North Carolina Courage with Sam Mewis and Sam Mewis and also Crystal Dunn and Stephanie LeBay. It should be a great game, and I invite you to watch it on television Saturday afternoon. What what else is there to do better? You come back from church, you come back from lunch and brunch with the family. It's 3:30. Put on your television, ESPN, TSN, get the kettle going, get some coffee, get some alcoholic beverages if you want, get something to eat, put yourself in front of your television set, and for two hours, watch the best women soccer players, some of them is the best in the world, play for a trophy this Sunday. And of course, I mentioned again in Premier League, tomorrow, Forge hosting Cavalry, Who's going to win? Cavalry won the spring season. Cavalry won the fall season. Cavalry won everything that's Canadian Premier League so far, except they weren't the Canadian, well, they weren't in the CONCACAF League. That was Forge, and Forge won there too. It's a battle of the best two teams in the Canadian Premier League. The best two soccer system, the best two soccer infrastructure outside of the three MLS academies in Canada are facing each other with a trophy on the line. We don't know what the trophy looks like yet. We'll know that later tonight. So those are the two games I'm excited the most this weekend. And then we move to England. Yes, Southampton Leicester. Today at 3 p.m. Eastern Time in the afternoon. Manchester City Villa. That's an interesting one. Watford Burnmouth. Watford needs to continue to get some points to get out of the relegation zone, to be quite honest. Brighton Everton. West Ham Sheffield United. That's an interesting one. Burnley Chelsea is another interesting one. Tomorrow, 12.30 p.m. That's what I'll be looking at. And of course, all the games in the Premier League are available on the zone. But there is a hack. The 12.30 Saturday game is always on NBC, and we do have NBC in Canada, so look for your local NBC affiliate, and Burnley Chelsea is available on NBC every Saturday, so at least you get one Premier League game a week on your television. We're moving to Sunday. Newcastle Wolves, Arsenal Crystal Palace, Liverpool Tottenham, that one's a very exciting matchup. Which Tottenham will show up? The Champions League Tottenham or the Premier League Tottenham? Which Liverpool will show up? The good one or the great one? It's the only two Liverpool that exist. You either get a very good team or you get a very great team at any given minute. Norwich versus Manchester United. Oh man, I can see Norwich pulling the double and beating the other Manchester team and having beaten Manchester City already, they can pull off a unusual feat in the Premier League, beating both Manchester club. This time it would be at Carroll Road at home for Norwich. So Norwich versus Manchester United is the last game in the Premier League this weekend. Let's move now to Ligue 1. Let's move to Ligue 1. Ligue 1 in France, not Monaco. Lille Bordeaux, not Monaco, is Friday game. We have started the Friday game in Europe now. Lille Bordeaux tomorrow morning. Montpellier, Angers, Brest, Dijon. Those are interesting ones. Stade Rennes and Nîmes. Lyon, Metz. Of course, those are okay. Stade de Rennes, though, they had a big defeat just a couple days ago. Losing to Monaco 3 2 last Sunday. And now they find themselves playing Toulouse in the weekend. And. Rennes had a great beginning of the season in French. They were up there with PSG for three, four weeks as the leading team in Ligue 1. But I do not think they'll stay there. And they might lose at home against Toulouse on Sunday. Saint-Étienne, Amiens. If Saint-Étienne is a team I always have a time for. Their supporters have a great history. And this club has been run not necessarily the right way, but it's for the right reasons over the year. If you catch my drift, and I do have time in my in my weekend to watch on Sunday at noon, Saint Etienne Amiens, and uh, the last game of the weekend is quite a game, quite a game in Ligue 1. It might be the most important game of the season for one of these two clubs, PSG at home at Parc des Princes versus Marseille, Marseille or PSG, which of them? Two will win on Sunday. It's going to be important because 
Marseille has some title aspirations, and we'll see if they can get three points on the title perennial contenders of PSG. Let's move a little bit more to the West, and let's go to... That's actually to the East, so let's move more East and go to the Bundesliga for this weekend. A couple match of note, Hertha Hoffenheim should be a cracker one tomorrow, 9.30 a.m., so it could be the game you start your weekend with. Another fascinating game is Bayern versus Union Berlin. It's not going to be easy. Bayern's probably going to have a a little bit of a squad rotation, which means maybe we'll have a Davies start on Saturday morning. That's a good way to start the day with your coffee, watching the Canadian International play for Bayern Munich. I wouldn't be shocked if that happens tomorrow. SC Freiburg, RB Leipzig, Bayern Leverkusen versus Werder Bremen, Wolfsburg, Augsburg, trying to say that 10 times quickly. And the last game in the Bundesliga, the league leaders, Munchen Gladbach. Yes, Munchen Gladbach are on top of the table right now. We'll face Eintracht Frankfurt on Sunday at 1 p.m. And the last league I want to talk to you about. Actually, two lives too. Might as well do both. Okay. I was going to skip La Liga. I don't know what I have against La Liga. I don't think I have anything against La Liga. But here, let's look at La Liga for a second. Let me just get it here. Oh, hello you. Let me just get La Liga here in front. Because... For the last couple of weeks, they've been shocking results, yes. But it's too early, and we all expect Barcelona and Real Madrid to get their form back at some point. So Villarreal, Alaves, Leganes, Mallorca, Valladolid, which did have a few surprising results this year versus Ibar. The Athletic Derby, Atletico Madrid versus Athletic Bilbao, Celta Vigo, Real Sociedad, uh, those are a couple of the matches. Let me get the other ones here. Of course, because of Champions League and, and other reasons, Barcelona, Real Madrid are not playing this weekend. So Osasuna, Valencia, Sevilla, Getafe, and Levante, Espanol are your game to finish the weekend in La Liga. Let's move to Serie A, the last league that we do take notice in Europe couple of interesting ones. Lecce, Juventus. Juventus uh, continuing to play well. Top of the table in Italy, which is never surprising. Inter Milan, Parma. Inter, fun team to watch this year. Bologna, Sampdoria. An important match for Bologna if they want to continue with their top 10 performance in Serie A. They have to get the job done at home versus Sampdoria. And those are the games that I will do. It's Espal. SPAL versus Napoli. Napoli, a team that is uh, having some interesting results in Europe so far and could continue and have a great performance. Could be a title contender this year. I think Napoli, Inter, and Juventus. Well, Juventus will probably win, but at least I think Inter and Napoli will give Juventus a run for their money. And that will be my weekend of soccer. How about yours? What will be what will you be watching this weekend in the world of football? Let us know at Soccer Today SPN at Kev Larme and at 24th Minute for Dwayne. We'll be back Monday with more, especially a review of the Canadian Premier League first leg. We'll talk about the NWSL final and we'll talk about Europe as well on Monday and Tuesday's show next week. And we'll start to preview also MLS Cup playoffs midweek next week as well again Canadian Premier League final tomorrow and WSL final on Sunday and we're back on Monday to talk about it as always enjoy your weekend and have a great soccer you can find the podcast version of all the shows we do on iTunes Apple Podcast Google Play Store TuneIn Radio iHeartRadio and anywhere you get your podcast 